So yesterday, through human error, I'm going to say, unfortunately, uh, the garden had a, suffered a bit of trauma. Um, we had a bit of a learning curve that uh, the little goslings will wander quite a distance from their parents uh, when they find good stuff. Um, so needless to say, we had geese in the garden. I'm going to show you the upset. So right there you can see one of the fences that was the culprit. We use four by four sheep fencing. Definitely works on the bigger geese, obviously. And once these goslings get big enough, it's not going to be a problem. But even now, they can still fit through that four by four. And as previously discussed in other videos, you can see, <laughs> well, maybe you can't see uh, what is left of our kale. They basically devastated it. You can see the little bits there. And see, not much left. It is still struggling to keep coming, so we're going to leave it. See what happens. But it took another hit yesterday with all the geese in here. They even took the tops out of our green onion or our onions. I was hoping not to have to use them as green onions. They seem to have really enjoyed the um, kohlrabi. You can see that end one there. Not much left of that. Right over here is the spot where they are coming in. So right here was the spot they were kind of coming through the fence and coming right into this patch. So I'm going to tie that little door on there for now and see if that <coughs> deters them a bit from that point. Right here are the black eyed peas. Uh, they took the tops out of most of this end of the row. They trampled the radish and carrot patch. Over here they ate more onion tops and definitely went into the broccoli patch, although the broccoli is also taking a beating from the cabbage whites, which is actually what this video is about. Um, it's time to make our cabbage white repellent and get it sprayed on here. We're going to do that in a second. But what took our biggest beating was our corn. This was corn that we received in the Canadian Seed Challenge. We actually weren't going to grow corn this year because all our neighbors are growing corn and therefore we would have cross-pollination. But we put it in to give it a shot. But they came up beautifully, but I'm not so sure it's going to bounce back from this. So we may uh, pull it out and just plant more sugar beets because... Our sugar beets also took a beating. But like I say, not the purpose of this video, but I thought I would share a little bit of our setback on some of the garden stuff. Um, luckily, we're early enough that none of it was detrimental. The things that need a little bit longer to get going are still fine. Um, but like I say, just a few little setbacks on some things. So anyways, we're going to take you inside and we're going to show you how to make our uh, repellent and get it sprayed on here to deal with some of these cabbage whites and other bugs that we're starting to see as the heat and the season progresses. And that's what this video is really about, is tackling the cabbage whites. Time to stop procrastinating. You can see the damage they are doing Look at them on there. I guess we're going to have to spray these too, maybe. So as we just discussed out in the garden, the cabbage whites are hitting us with a vengeance. They are on most of the brassicas out there and definitely checking out a lot of other things. Uh, so we're going to make some tea to spray on those, um, hopefully tonight. Uh, if not, it'll be first thing tomorrow morning and see how the results go. But uh, normally I just do um, garlic and onions um, boiled and steeped for overnight. But today I'm going to try a little bit of a different recipe out of a book, out of a book that I recently purchased. So this book was highly recommended by another channel that we watch, uh, Pinball Preparedness. We'll uh, link his channel below there. Recommended it for all homemade tonics, that sort of thing for the garden. So of course we picked it up. 
And there's been some really, really good ones in there as we've looked through. Uh, but this is our first time actually implementing using some. Um, and we're going to try the, let me open it. Of course, I marked it. Wild mustard tea. It says no cabbage moth worth her spots will lay eggs in your vegetable garden. I will put the um, ingredient list below, but definitely uh, check out this book if you get a chance. Uh, we picked ours up off Amazon, so um, give it a try. But basically this recipe calls for whole cloves, wild mustard, garlic, and boiling water. That's basically it. We have eight cups of water because I want to make this uh, enough to fill our little sprayer. We have, let's go to the cloves first, 32 whole cloves. And then we have, I only did six cloves of garlic because we just took our scapes off of the garlic out in the garden and all the end bits and things like that, I've just chucked in this pot to steep with it. So I'm going on the theory I can use a little less on the garlic cloves save those and uh, we'll boil these up instead. And then it says a handful of mustard leaves. So uh, we had some wild garlic mustard. We're gonna give that a shot, see what happens. Garlic, garlic, and more garlic. But we're gonna put this all in the pot, boil it up and then let it steep. And then we'll let it cool off and we'll get it into the sprayer and see how it works. All right, so we have strained everything. Uh, we did boil this, uh, we boiled it, then we let it kind of steep overnight. So we strained it out this morning and we're left with all kind of the off bits. And I actually am thinking I'm going to put a little bit more water in and just boil them again for a second dose. It won't be as strong, but there's still a lot of that delicious odor coming from this. So I think it would still work as the repellent. And uh, luckily for us, we did not put it on yesterday afternoon because it poured rain all night. So this is perfect timing to put it on today. And here is what we've strained off. We've probably got about two liters. It's gonna fill it right up. There's one of them horrible culprits. Pretty, but... Spray anything in the brassicas family, right? Yep. Uh, now it does seem to work a little bit for flea beetles and it actually seems to repel cucumber beetles Which we do have they're do the have ye too. white yellow striped ones. I already videoed it's, them. It's not perfect, but it does seem to help Oh, here's some in the garden right now. Look at them suckers Now this won't kill them, but it is supposed to repel them. It stinks. So we'll find out The nice part is it's technically completely edible as long as you don't mind garlic. So as long as you rinse it not really going to hurt anything. No. There we go. Bok choy. Check. Done. Oh, he didn't like that. He flew away pretty quick. Cauliflower. Well, first batch of cauliflower. Check. Getting the cucumbers and the curly leaf kale here. The broccoli. The broccoli is the one that really seems to take the hit the most. Enough. And the kohlrabi. We got to do a little bit of weeding around this stuff, but we're not doing too bad. That is the start of our efforts to thwart the uh, cabbage moths. Um, Stay tuned, we'll uh, do an update, let you know how it goes. But just remember, this is a repellent. Uh, you do need to keep applying this. I mean, basically, if it rains or uh, you water, uh, you're going to be reapplying. So we had a really good rain yesterday, and we're supposed to be dry for two days. So hopefully that'll give it a chance. And uh, we're going to mix up some more so that we're ready to reapply um, come early next week. But hopefully... We're getting onto this early enough, unlike last year where we were so far behind that they'd pretty much eaten everything. Uh, so this year we still got a lot of uh, vegetation on these plants, so I think we'll be just fine. But I'll put the uh, recipe below. Um, and uh, thanks again to Pinball Preparedness for recommending this book. Fingers crossed this recipe works great. If not, I'll be posting another one using the one I used last year. Have a great gardening day, everybody.